So good evening, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have today uh, two or three things to discuss. Um, we have on board uh, Rose Glavin, uh, that was uh, also with, yesterday with us. And uh, she started actually uh, to present uh, her point of view, but uh, then later on, uh, Jeremy uh, jumped uh, upon uh, our call. So uh, maybe my proposal would be that Rose uh will give us uh, like uh, a kind of an insight uh, from uh, her team and uh, it, that, that would be that would be my proposal because i think that that what uh, yesterday was presented by jeremy is enough i mean at least for 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 a moment now uh, but uh, before uh, we uh, pass over to it uh, I would like to discuss just two small organizational things. Namely, we have already in our folder uh, a kind of uh, uh, sheet with, uh, with names and tasks because uh, some of us um, asked already uh, for some clear uh, role and task assignments. So I think that uh, everyone uh, can declare himself herself working on a particular thing and uh, so that it, it, it it's becoming slowly clear uh, who uh, what is supposed to do uh, so it's one thing and another thing just let me uh, take a look at our agenda uh, Yes, and uh, another organizational thing, namely we have also our technical design draft uh, Google Doc. And I would ask you to fill in uh, those parts of the document uh, you're working on. So, because for me, I think I'm not an expert, for instance, on databases. So already I saw uh, Slava uh, put a, uh, his part on, on uh, of, of the project describing a little bit uh, MongoDB. So I would like to uh, ask you to do the same, just a short introduction and the motivation uh, why we should uh, use uh, um, this type of library, or this tool. And uh, mostly it's meant for people being uh, outside our group so that it's clear uh, for, so that the, the questions why we are doing this why we're using this uh, will won't won't come up uh, over and over again in in our discussions so that everyone uh, has a nice in, uh, technical introduction to uh, to our pipeline so it will be the second thing and now i would uh, pass the word to uh, rose if you may Hi, I was hi. I was planning on coming and being completely silent today, but okay. um, no, I. <laughs> I, I guess I my entire point is that I think you're underestimating the differences between researchers, and I think you have to pick a particular use case and do that well. And I think your Jeremy's use case is a really good use case because the the data is more structured and there's less subjectivity even within the research. Whereas when you come up to clinical data and the risk factors, et cetera, there's so much more subjectivity and it looks from the outside like the data is highly structured and you can use things like fire, but the meaning and the semantics behind that is so much more complicated than you realize. And for that reason, I'm super supportive of sticking with Jeremy's use case, because I think he has a very clear vision on what he needs to do. And there's very, there's, there are easy ways to link the, the research literature to the outcomes he's trying to come up with. Whereas when I think when you get into, like even on the call this morning with Kozali, I think it was interesting that she pointed out that they were asked to remove, they had an assessment in there of the impact of the research and their users asked them to remove it. 
because they felt like they should not be making that ass assessment. Things like having causally determine if the confidence intervals were valid or not, their users asked them to remove that functionality. And I think that speaks an awful lot. Here is a company who has built this already and has worked extensively with researchers. And even they are, are backing off from doing some of this stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good point, Rose. Um, so for um, the use case specifically, because I think um, we also really need to narrow down the use case. Um, from what I'm understanding, uh, I don't think Jeremy's here, but are we trying to reproduce essentially what Causalead already does? No. We're, um, okay. I think what J Jeremy has been exploring a bunch of different tools to try and do this. And I, I haven't had a chance to touch base with him in the last 24 hours, but it's not clear to me if Indra has superseded Causally in his in his opinion. It sounds like, and, and maybe it's just the fact that we can use that technology, whereas we can't embed, um, we can't embed causally. We can use causally. I can use causally as a researcher, but in terms of embedding that into another tool, I don't think we can do that. Does anybody okay. else know more about that? Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, uh, it's really the wrong way to follow because uh, we're trying to follow um, open data way. If there are some commercial tools, we should be able to reproduce experiment. And uh, we don't know what is behind the backend they're creating. Agree. That's why I, the Indra thing, I think, is why Jeremy is wanting to pursue that more than Causally. I think Causally is a great product. As a user, when I look at that, it's like, yeah, I want to use that. I'm going to use that immediately. But you can't use that in your, you, you can't build a stack with that. Exactly. And also, uh, it's not possible to rely on actually on external dependencies that right. we are not controlling. Yeah, mm -hmm. I understand. So I, I think that the value in that is what are they doing and where can you improve upon that? Because there are improvements looking at it. Yeah, there are improvements that can be made. Mm -hmm. I, but I um, still don't know. Do you understand if Indra is providing the same technology as, as Causal? I haven't. That's, I, um, I think Jeremy mentioned um, yesterday that Indra is basically like an open source version of yeah, Causally. I think so, so too. Yeah. And so we can use that within it. And I think that there is value add that we could, we could put on top of the Indra stuff that isn't there right now. So basically, yeah. we already had the chance to install it and uh, uh, try on our server. Unfortunately, some dependencies uh, we are missing, but uh, we are working on it. So I think today uh, we will enable uh, Indra API. So, yeah, we will ask uh, Jeremy, Jeremy to test it again. And if it works, it can be actually included in pipeline as component. I also um, see it's a good opportunity because I know people from Harvard Medical School and uh, I'm pretty sure they can help us and uh, probably collaborate with us on, uh, on the development if we'll bring uh, good data to them. Slava, I have a question for you uh, about uh, Indra. Um, I, I really don't understand what's going on with Indra, but like, what would be the inputs needed for Indra specifically? Okay, so what Indra does, it does statement extraction. So if you follow links that Jeremy provided, you will see there are triples. And I don't know if you thought about triples, but uh, it's something from knowledge graph uh, theory. And uh, it's basically, a, it's subject to, and predicate and relation, and you can build a, any knowledge uh, only constructing all these components in the right way. Uh, Imran, to put it uh, shortly, it's like we have this linguistical analysis, like we have, um, let's say, uh, lemmas or uh, entity uh, items. And now we're trying to put like this, those uh, lingu lingu linguistical elements into logic, uh, logical uh, structure. Actually, it's a translation between yeah. the uh, natural language into uh, predicative logic. That's correct, and, Lava? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So ba basically, <laughs> so, uh, you, you can see this pipeline if you'll split uh, every paper in sentences. 
you can actually um, this API from Indra. You can put every sentence in 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 this tool, and it will recognize all statements, and you will get it back in nice JSON format. So basically, you can already enrich a data set that you have with new information, much more structured that you have as input. So um, regarding the so Indra is will extract. Uh, the triples and construct a knowledge graph, right? From the text? Yes, that's right, yeah. Okay. And now so, a new, new, yeah. new component is coming to the place. Uh, it's already described in, in the document. It's MongoDB, uh, because MongoDB is really a nice, no scale, uh, scalable storage that can be scaled in any cloud. And uh, well, it's, I would not say it's unlimited, but it has really good performance with a lot of documents. So uh, if you'll follow this way, probably after we'll get not 45,000 uh, documents, but millions, we'll, we'll still be able to run the same pipeline. And uh, we'll put, uh, we put all documents and after we'll extract some relations, we'll also will put in MongoDB because you can run aggregated uh, queries on top of it and you can get back uh, some statistics immediately. And uh, so, for um, Indra specifically, and because you were talking about um, kind of annotating the uh, the text, oh, yeah. it, it's it's a different uh, thing. So uh, annotation is, I think, uh, number six in, in uh, our document. Yeah, one point six. So um, yeah, probably Alex tell you more uh, can tell you more, but uh, he suggested that we, we can use uh, hypothesis. And I quickly uh, asked my uh, boss of innovation, and uh, he was involved in the development of this tool. And he, he really recommended to use it because uh, it has like open standard support and uh, it's easily, uh, it, it can be integrated in, in any system. So basically we can use this tool also for uh, annotation uh, if we we'll collect all relevant uh, COVID-19 relevant papers. And we can ask uh, people with domain knowledge actually to evaluate every paper that we think probably related to COVID-19. And after it can be easily integrated with um, other components from our stack. What is the name of that tool again? Can you repeat that? Uh, it's in document. How about this? Yeah. Yeah. So like hypothesis and then yeah. okay. I, I, I um, thought you said HIPAA test. <laughs> um, just to... Uh, just to comment on that, so because Slava, when we spoke about it, what I thought you want to achieve is basically scrape articles off the web, um, basically any article or any text that's related to to COVID, um, and and get that um, annotated. Um, so what? So hypothesis, we could probably also use it to get scientific literature annotated. I'm just not sure if it's needed really. Um, because it's, if the scientific literature is, is, is relatively small and we might actually we might actually use just, I don't know, like a custom pipeline or just pass the papers to our annotators and have them annotated. It so just depends on, on the volume, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's to be decided. Um, but with regards to hypothesis, I can potentially also reach out to the CEO because I want actually, um, I have like a 10 years link with them, so I could, I could see if, um, I could, if we can get help from them if we end up using it. It's just not clear what we're actually trying to annotate in this case, because I understood it as we're trying to get basically any, any news article even on, on COVID. No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's not really true because I, I have a vision that we should ask people actually to annotate all materials, all papers that probably belong to COVID-19 collection. I mean, focus right. on COVID-19 because now it's like uh, we, do, we do actually processing of uh, all bus words from, from uh, a lot of papers and uh, uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, very difficult to, to get. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see. Okay. I mean, there's also, I guess there's also other tools that could use like Crowdflower, for instance, or maybe even SageMaker on AWS. Um, it's, it's quite good for labeling. Um, it depends what we want to achieve, actually. But do we already have a taxonomy of, of labels? Do we know what we want to annotate for? Because that will also influence how we set it up, I think. 
So my understanding is Jeremy knows exactly what he wants to label for, um, but I don't know who the annotators are. I think he's still trying to recruit that. Right, okay. So yeah, I mean, we, we had a chat about this earlier. And as, as far as I understand it, we do have some annotators that are just really busy. <laughs> I mean, internally, we have, we have people. Um, that, um, that could Christine, potentially do this. Would, would you be able to weigh in on this, especially because I, of uh, my... Yeah, so we do have a small team, about 10 uh, medical students uh, that have been helping us with other annotation tasks. Uh, but I think they're pretty busy right now for, I think, test Rick's work. I'm not sure. I have to check with that. But I do think we need probably need to recruit more annotators. Uh, <laughs> they're a little... Um, yeah, I think um, Hillary, Hillary runs a team of annotators, doesn't she? Uh, yeah, Hillary, I think it's Hillary Dragner who runs a team of annotators. There's about, yeah, 10 of them as far as I understand. Hmm. But not all of them are on Slack, though. Some of them are just in a community I mean, of however they managed. Here's a so what, quick question. So do we have right now like a dedicated, like, Slack channel or something where annotators are hanging out because it looks like annotation right now is a, becomes a huge bottleneck for a lot of efforts. Right. So we need to kind of do something clever there, maybe structure, you know, senior annotators, just, you know, kind of having low level annotators. We have access to scale AI folks that have like a huge like army of people who can annotate but they could only do very simple tasks, right? So if we can come up with a, like this hierarchy and structure of what we, needs to be done, we have, again, access to some interest, like powerful like third party vendors, then we could kind of take some of the maybe like this high load on our annotators who are busy, right, that way and so on. So we need to do something clever uh, and structured. Way. So do we have some place where all of this annotation talks are talk happening? I'm not familiar with them. There is channels, but they're never busy. They don't get talked in a lot. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm in a lot of channels. Let me just find it. Um, do, do, do we know what the, that's to my question earlier, what's the required expertise actually? Like that, so <laughs> med students, are, is that fine? Or do we need more? Do we need to be actual experts in COVID? I think that's the problem, is that your annotators have to be specific to what you're trying to do. And so everybody makes mm -hmm. the assumption that, well we'll, well, we'll pull in some med students, but perspective is really important. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. comes back to the use case. Like if I'm annotating and I have the people I work with annotating, we're gonna pick totally different things than Jeremy would annotate for. Mm -hmm. So saying like, as an organization, Corona Y having all these people annotating, I guess I'm not seeing how it all fits together. Which is so why the use case is so important. That's why we need to, to synchronize all of this into one spot and then like deal with it. And I think it's yeah. not part of this search engine conversation. It's bigger, right. like part of the bigger picture. So let's probably move that into start like uh, this central point to bring all of this together. Because this is definitely not part of like search engine stuff. It's uh, more complex. Yeah, uh, guys, because we have something like eight minutes left. So, and uh, maybe there's also, uh, because we can keep uh, going with, uh, let's say, uh, the whole topic on on, on uh, entities, relation, extraction, and reasoning. But uh, maybe there are other points we should talk about now for a while. Other yeah, questions? Let's bring back conversation to, so we we need to fill up technical design doc, right? All of yep. those details so we could um, synchronize in terms of technologies, et cetera, because again, there is a huge can of worm in terms of who wants to use what, et cetera. Um, luckily, we have some, some expertise to oversee that. Uh, so let's kind of move into that direction and then see, you know, what we end up with. And uh, task uh, task uh, assignment or task uh, role assignment, and uh, I think that one of the problems we are going to face uh, is that some of people working with us are not on particular on this uh, on our team, 
So, uh, because for instance, Jeremy uh, working with Indra, it's like, on the one hand, is a part of uh, this uh, knowledge uh, discovery engine, but on the other hand, uh, Jeremy is, I think, so uh, normally on uh, another team. So, uh, yeah, here I need to split between those who are uh, exclusively on the team search team, uh, search engines, search engine team, and those who are, let's say, externals but working for us, something like that. But it's a organizational uh, remark. But I, I don't think it's a problem because you can see uh, Indra is kind of backend. Yeah. So you don't need to know what is inside. You need to know how to actually use it. Yeah, sure. I, I just uh, I was I, I I was talking just about this uh, sheet we have on uh, in our folder with uh, different uh, like uh, with tasks and role uh, everyone is taking so that we have also people outside the group that are from other groups. But okay, we we can uh, put it in order. I mean, like that's not. Any so regarding um, the path to having Jeremy be able to do what he needs to do. Um, what, like from the raw text, what is the path to getting to yeah. Jeremy's result? Slava, could you? Yes, yeah, so, so basically uh, how I see it, uh, it's just RESTful API and uh, you have input JSON and you should get exactly the same JSON <laughs> as output as uh, basically service from Harvard. This is yep. how we can, we, we can understand that it works well and uh, we can reuse it for uh, our project. Imran, uh, input are actually words or lemmas or uh, this uh, OMLCL. Yeah, like pre-processed data, yeah. Pre-processed data and output like, are actually <laughs> already those names of objects or uh, drugs or etc. But in the structure that is actually structure for some uh, federal processing with uh, predicted, predictive logic or any kind of a software that can uh, figure out logical or causal, causal relationships between them and not semantics, for instance. So let me, let me just summarize this because um, I, I'm, very, I'm a newcomer to this yes, and sure. maybe it'll help with other people as well. Yeah, yeah. Three steps after pre-processing is entity relation extraction um, using, for example, Indra to create a knowledge graph, right? And then from that knowledge graph, um, we have Jeremy's work, which uh, is, creates causal uh, relationships. Is that a good summary? Yeah, I think more or less, okay. Okay. So um, regarding the Indra, I think there's a lot of people that are trying different things uh, for entity uh, extraction uh, or relation extraction. Um, there was one that uses um, like an NLP ML algorithm called SPIRT. There was another one that Brandon was trying, which was SEMREP. And then we have Indra, right? Can these be combined or can, is, can we configure them to be able to talk the same language? Uh, it's not clear yet. We don't know what we'll get as a result. So okay. yeah, we should try and after we'll see what will happen. Okay, sounds good. Could uh, you, uh, Imran, could you put those, those names you mentioned now on either on Trello or on Slack? Uh, the names of uh, things you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, okay. I'll, um, I'll break them down and I'll put them into the uh, schematic so that it's yeah. more clear for everyone else. Yes, yeah, sure. thanks. But, but just, and, a, uh, just a, just a oh. question here so that we're picking one of them, right? So the task is to actually compare those three run experiments and then the one that works best we pick is that because they're achieving the same thing. Is that correct? Imran, uh, they are um, the same? Yeah. So, um, if, if there anyone else is more comfortable with the subject, please feel free to step in. Um, Jeremy is from Jeremy's conversation, okay. and it, it's really unfortunate that um, he's not here, but I could try to yeah. okay. kind I think of we give can my point. Out. We can That's, figure out. Hold on. Uh, we, 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 let me, we, let me just finish this point. Okay. Um, regarding the selection, I don't think it's going to be exclusively one choice. Because the problem with like Indra, for example, is that Indra is a rule-based engine. 
so it misses context, right? Which is um, if we use a ML portion, then that will capture the context, right? But then we suffer from accuracy because we're not using uh, enough data or um, we don't have enough, um, uh, yeah, if we don't have enough annotations, then we, are, have, we lose accuracy. So the best point would probably be be able to combine them both. Right, okay, yeah, so they're qualitatively different. Okay, makes sense. Um, I think he's okay. planning on using reinforcement learning to do that when I last talked to him about this. Hey, I can help with that. That was my understanding. I guess I feel like a lot has changed in the last few days, and I don't know enough about Indra to talk about how he's planned. But when he showed it to me before, it w he was having domain experts look at it and then send it back in so that we would we would um, be improving as time goes on. Uh, folks, I think that we can uh, continue on this particular subject uh, uh, on the next talk. So uh, how we can integrate Indra with other tools or libraries and how can we uh, like uh, figure out how to deal with certain caveats uh, of this approach. Uh, because now we are uh, already, we have uh, run uh, of out of time. So I think that is something that we can elaborate more uh, next time. Okay, can I ask uh, a, a final yeah, question? Sure. Yeah. Um, do, do we, because I, because I had to skip two meetings, so I, I might not know this, but do we know that all of these components and all of this fits together um, and goes towards a, a clearly defined use case, or at least somewhat defined use case, like Rose said in the beginning? Because I fully agree, we should pick one use case and do it well. So I might not know this, I'm just asking if like we're, we're missing the, you know, the, the forest for the trees, if, if yeah. like, is, is, are we actually going towards solving something um, and is, is it clear what that is or is it still unclear? I think we're picking Jeremy's use case and I think he has a very clear vision of what he's trying to accomplish and I think he can guide us through what specifically we have to do. Okay because if, if he has the use case then it would be really great to put it down somewhere um, yeah. so that it's down and also to then use that to scope this project so basically put down what we want to achieve. What, this is the scope that this product is going to have in the first iteration anyways, and, and then we just iterate over it. Yeah, so just I agree. Have, have that clarity. That would, that would be really helpful. Yeah, um, and to understand which pieces he thinks is doing what. Yeah, I think that's yeah. it. In general, we are gathering uh, um, user stories from different sources, but I think th th focusing on just one, uh, uh, one uh, user story, one user case is crucial. But then we can also compare this particular uh, user uh, case uh, by Jeremy with, with the other to figure out how we can then later on extrapolate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, agree. agree. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's, I'm glad of. Um, okay, so yes, Imran? Oh, no, sorry, I had nothing to say. Okay, no, okay, early? Okay, good. Uh, so uh, I can uh, conclude this session. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your presence, input, and for sharing. Um, I'm going to uh, upload everything on YouTube within some minutes. And we hear uh, and we see us tomorrow, the same time, the same place. Have a good night or a good day, depending on. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye.